Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 497, 497, Friday, July the 20th, 2018. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, so uh, before I get started on the things on my list here, there's something, a story that just popped up uh, just moments ago before I started doing this video. It appears now that uh, we're still not 100% sure, but we're now about 90% sure that those five people that Mueller is um, going to grant immunity to, it appears that two of them people uh, are going to be the Podestas. It also appears that one of them may be Rick Gates. And another one is also associated was the uh, acting, uh, I guess, CEO of this company, this uh, lobbying firm that, uh, that Tony Podesta had, had set up. And so it appears they're all guilty in the crimes, you see. They're all guilty in the crimes, but he wants Manafort. So he is going to give immunity to four guilty people who are guilty in the crimes so that he can get one guy, Manafort, who was actually the low man on the totem pole. He was working for the Podestas. The CEO that was, that was uh, running that lobbying organization was over uh, a senior to Manafort, and Rick Gates, of course, was his partner. You see how that works? So it looks like we're 90% sure we're gonna find out that that's exactly what Uncle Bob is doing. He's going to grant the Podestas, Rick Gates, this uh, woman who was the CEO, they're all going to get immunity so that he can hang Paul Manafort. You talk about injustice. And I would think that uh, his attorney is going to go for an equal justice under the law argument. I mean, this is so corrupt, man. Uh, but the judge, unfortunately, it's the judge in that case is an Obama appointee, and she has ruled against Manafort at every single turn. She just ruled against him yesterday. Uh, he was trying to get out of jail. She ruled against him again. So it doesn't look good. I think ultimately I hope Trump will pardon Manafort, and uh, hopefully the Podesta brothers uh, and, anyone, and Mr. Gates, if in fact he does turn on Manafort, uh, and of course this woman CEO who are the real perps they should all be given criminal sentencing and Uncle Bob Uncle Bob his ass is gonna end up going to jail in, in all of this because he's now part of the cover-up of the frame-up he's now part of it he's now part of it we have to fight these people every day and it's hard work and it's frustrating but you can't give an inch you can't give an inch why because if you give an inch, they'll take an inch. If you give an inch today, they'll take an inch today. You give an inch tomorrow, they'll take an inch tomorrow. You keep giving an inch at a time, they'll keep taking an inch at a time. And pretty soon, you lose. Never, never give up, back down, or step backward. Always push forward and fight them on every battle, on every front. Got to defeat them. Got to defeat them, my friends. I'll get more into that later. Let's get to the news. Michael Scheuer. Some of you are familiar with Michael Scheuer. He headed up the CIA's Bin Laden unit back uh, during the late 80s to the 90s. Uh, he was the CIA officer in charge when they actually, he was over in, I think, uh, Afghanistan with other CIA and some uh, special forces guys. They literally had Bin Laden in their uh, view with uh, binoculars. They could have given the eight-digit grid coordinates to launch a strike on him and take him out. They contacted Bill Clinton and said, hey, we got bin Laden in our lenses. We got him in our lenses. Give us the word and we'll take him out. Bill Clinton would not give the word to take out bin Laden back then. He said he had to check with his lawyers and his lawyers told him it may not be legal. <laughs> it may not be legal. We know the Clintons care a lot about the law. So Michael Scheuer who basically, uh, after the war in Iraq started, and uh, he came out and it was appearing on quite a few different networks, including liberal networks and otherwise, uh, he was uh, making comments that um, he was uh, suggesting that Israel had an awful lot of influence on the decision to go into Iraq. And as a result, he got blacklisted, blackballed from appearing on any media. That's why you haven't seen Michael Scheuer in about 10 years on the media. But he was on a radio show and he brought up a very good point, the same point that I was kind of making that other people have made, but I think he made it very, uh, a lot clearer. Um, and basically, uh, he was, 
he was talking about the fact that we keep hearing that, yeah, 99% of the people in the FBI and the DOJ, they're great people. It's just these few people at the top. It's just a few people at the top, and the rest of the organization, they're all great. Well, I think we all know there's that's a lot of bullshit. Yeah, there are good people in the FBI. There are good people probably over at the DOJ. But to suggest that it's only just a few at the very top and all the rest are all good guys, uh, that's not exactly true. <laughs> That's not exactly true. I would say it's probably maybe 50-50, maybe less. There was a lot of bad guys at the FBI and the DOJ, and it's not just the top tier. And Michael Scheuer made this point perfectly clear on this radio show. He asked a simple question. He said, if it's only the top tier and everyone else at the FBI and the DOJ are straight shooters, then why uh, have none of these straight shooters other than the top tier, why have they not come forward? Why have they not come forward? Well, now we understand there's a few that want to and have talked about it, but so far, and they, and they were there the whole time that all this was going on, they knew it was all going on, no one ever blew the whistle on it, and still you don't see them coming out and taking any risk to go public. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that they are corrupt too. <laughs> That's what it tells Michael Scheuer, and he was in that organization for a very long time. He understands it very well. So he said there's one of two things is the reason why these people who are supposedly uh, all those good guys in the FBI and DOJ, why they're not coming forward. And one of those reasons would be is because they are corrupt too, and they're not really good guys at all. And the other reason would be that they are afraid to come forward. That's exactly right. We know there's a couple dozen who have, have, have been telling Sarah Carter and other people that they want to come forward, but they need to be subpoenaed because they're afraid that they'll get sued and that they won't, that it'll bankrupt them, and they need to be subpoenaed. That way, the FBI or, or DOJ will have to provide the defense for them. But do you think that the FBI and DOJ would provide defense for someone who's coming out to testify against the FBI and DOJ? That is a pretty tricky position, and if you think that your career is not going to be affected or whatever after that, you're crazy. And these people aren't necessarily crazy. So, yeah, there are some that are uh, honest and want to come forward, but they're obviously not willing to take the risk uh, or what have you. But there's a lot more of them, a lot more of them, than just the top tier who are not coming forward. And that can only be because they're a part of it. They're corrupt too. So he also talked about the um, summit in Helsinki, and he again he made the point that I've been making, but I think he made a very made it very clear in few in fewer words. <laughs> uh, so Scheuer says, you know, that Trump was set up uh, in this situation at Helsinki. They knew exactly how they were going to play it. It was a plot. It was all planned out. They had a script written. They knew what questions they were going to ask, and they knew exactly how they were going to play it. This was entirely set up. This was, this was from the very beginning, and it was a plot that Trump had no way out of, as Michael Scheuer pointed out, because he says, as, as I mentioned, that if Trump would have stood there in front of all those people and dressed down at Putin in front of the world, then the media would have gone after him as a rank amateur and a prude and, and a very, very bad diplomat. They would have jumped all over him, and they would say, well, that wasn't very presidential. You don't jump all over a world leader uh, in front of all these people. That should be that stuff should be discussed privately, behind closed doors, blah, 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 blah. This is how they would have attacked him if he would have gone after Putin. But if he doesn't go after Putin, then, of course, if he's diplomatic and presidential and doesn't go after Putin publicly, dressing him down, then they can say that he's a Russian stooge and feed the Russia narrative. So he had no way to win. They had a game plan to screw him. Either way he went. It was, it was a no-win situation. It was a plot. It was all planned out weeks ago because they knew he was going to be having this meeting in Helsinki with Putin, and they knew exactly how they were going to take advantage of it to screw Trump any way and every way they could. It was a no-win situation. Michael Scheuer is absolutely 100% correct. I sometimes wonder, as most of you know, I'm a big fan of Sun Tzu. I told you when I was in the Army, I used to keep a little like pocket. I had a small uh, uh, paperback copy of The Art of War. I used to keep it in my BDUs, and I just read it constantly. I've read uh, The Art of War probably more times than I can count. I have five different copies of the book here uh, in my home. I have uh, two hard, big hard cover books. Um, I have three smaller ones, two paperbacks, a small hardback. 
and it's one of my favorite books of all time. So uh, I've studied uh, Sun Tzu, The Art of War, very closely, and I'm beginning to think that Trump is also has read The Art of War. <laughs> Let me uh, give you tell you what I'm talking about here. So, um, one of the uh, strategies uh, that and tactics that uh, Sun Tzu talks about in The Art of War is uh, he talks about how, various ways how you use your enemy uh, against himself. You get your enemy to destroy himself. And we see that happening every day, so we know that Trump to some degree understands this, this tactic, whether it's because he read Sun Tzu or whether it's just, you know, he naturally understands this or what have you. But there, in, in The Art of War, uh, Sun Tzu says that one way that you can get the enemy to destroy himself is to force the enemy to reveal himself. Force the enemy to reveal himself. Because a lot of times the enemy is, is subdued. The enemy hides. The enemy hides behind smoke and mirrors. The enemy hides in cr corners, cracks and crevices. The enemy doesn't always show himself. So what you have to do is get the enemy to expose himself. Get the enemy to expose himself to reveal himself, what he really is. And the tactic that uh, Sun Tzu gives in order to do this is he says that if your enemy is of caloric temper, irritate him. <laughs> if your enemy is of caloric temper, irritate him. Can you think of anyone that irritates the left more than Trump? <laughs> and is this causing them to reveal themselves? Yes, it is. So there you go. Trump is practicing the art of war, <laughs> whether he knows it or not. And it's being very, very effective. Now, yeah, this word, if your enemy is not of chloric, uh, uh, chloric, C-H-O-L-E-R-I-C, temper, uh, if, if your enemy is of chloric, temper, irritate him. And what that word essentially means is angry. If you have an enemy who's got a bad attitude, he's angry, he's, uh, he's you know, goes off the handle pretty easily, uh, has a short fuse, this is a good type of enemy to be up against because you can irritate that enemy. And when you get irritated, you make mistakes, you make miscalculations, and you don't act uh, uh, a lot of times with a great deal of wisdom. So what this does, this forces your enemy into making mistakes and revealing himself. So there you go. Force the enemy to reveal himself and you do this by uh, irritating your angry enemy. You make him angrier. It's exactly right. Of course, let's not forget, John Brennan is sticking with it. He said it again yesterday. He's sticking with this story that he did not know about the dossier until December of 2016. This is nearly impossible to believe. This is nearly impossible to believe. We have, we know he set up the six agency task force, which included FBI and various other agencies of the government. We know that Peter Strzok was a part of that. We know that Clapper was a part of that. Both Clapper, Clapper, Comey, and Strzok and McCabe, they were all aware of the dossier as early as July of 2016, because that's when uh, the first meeting between the FBI and, and Christopher Steele took place. And then they had another meeting in October. And in between that time, there were various versions of the dossier being passed about through the State Department from Steele directly to Confusion GPS. And now we know from Confusion GPS to Nellie Orr to Bruce Orr to the FBI. Brennan is intimately involved in this multi-agency, six-agency task force, whatever you want to call it, which includes uh, uh, Strzok and Clapper. They're, they're learning about all this information in the dossier, yet it's not being shared with, with, uh, with Brennan? That's nearly impossible to believe. He's got to be lying. And then they put out their, uh, their group intelligence report, and that was when? That was late summer. And lots, if not just about everything in it, comes from the dossier. Yet this son of a bitch continues to stick to the fact that he says he didn't know about the dossier until December 2016. I think at some point we are going to get the facts that are going to prove he was lying. And he was under oath when he said that. What a liar. Don't believe it.
as I've said before, we must make it perfectly clear. Uh, that, that means the president, and I think Trump's doing the best he can, uh, but also Republicans, they need to make it clear exactly what they are investigating. Then we must expose the truth. We cannot let up. Here's why. Because the swamp is not going to stop. The deep state is not going to stop. They will continue until they destroy Trump and or his presidency. They are not going to stop. They are not going to tire. Everything is on the line. We're in this fight and we got to finish it and we got to win it. There's no turning back. I think Jim Jordan, I think Matt Gates, I think uh, some of these guys in the Freedom Caucus, Mark Meadows, I think they understand this. I believe Trump understands this. This is not a battle that for those people who say, well, you know, he's been president now for a year and a half or two years. It's just time to let all this stuff go. Stop talking about the, 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 the media being the enemy of the state be an enemy of the people, uh, stop you know, going after the CIA and the FBI, don't dig into this stuff any farther, let the sleeping dog lie, just forget about it and focus on the economy. Yeah, it was wrong what happened. The CIA, the FBI, the State Department, the Obama administration time to launch a uh, frame-up operation to destroy his candidacy and then his presidency, but let's just go ahead and let all that go because it's water under the bridge. It's time to move forward. Bullshit! Bullshit! That is a losing strategy. Do not listen to anyone who tells you that, because I'm starting to hear those rumblings. I'm hearing those rumblings. Do not let anyone convince you that these people are not going to stop. If you give them an inch, they'll take it. You give them an inch today, they'll take it. An inch tomorrow, they'll take it. An inch the next day, they'll take it. Pretty soon, you ain't got butt. Nothing. That's what you got. Dick. So, never. We can't stop. We're in this fight. We got to finish it, and we got to win it. We have to prove what the deep state did, and we have to hold them accountable. This is not negotiable. They started it, or as Rambo said, they drew first blood. We're going to finish it. We got to finish it. If we don't, they'll finish off Trump. They're never going to stop. Brennan, Clapper, Comey, Strzok, Page, the entire upper echelon of the Obama administration they despise Trump. They've been trying to undermine him. They will continue to undermine him. And the only thing that we can do is get the evidence out of what really happened and then hold them accountable. And yes, it'll it'll create a lot of ripples in the pool. It'll uh, you know, it'll you know, it'll break a lot of uh, eggs. All these things are true. It's going to be messy. I told you it was going to be messy. And it's not going to be easy and it's not going to happen overnight. It's a long tough fight. And if it takes the entire first four years of his first term, that's what we got to do. Because if we don't, there will not be a second term. Maybe not even make it through his first term. Because eventually, they will, they will succeed if you do not fight them. You cannot just walk away and try to let this thing be water under the bridge. No way. No way. You think they're going to stop? <laughs> Ain't going to happen. We're too far into this. We have to win this fight, my friends. And I think Trump knows that. And I think he knows that he is going to have to get involved at some point. But we have members of the Freedom Caucus. We have about 25, 35 guys uh, who I think do understand this. I think Nunes understands it. I think Jordan understands it because it's not just about Trump. It's about the future of the party. It's about the future of the country. It's the future of the country. It's too big. You cannot let these guys get away with it. They never should have let them uh, get away, the deep state get away with the Kennedy assassination. But they did. And that's how we got 9-11 and a lot of other things. And we let them get away with that. And that's why they're doing what they're doing to Trump now. Because as far as they're concerned, they can do this stuff and never be held accountable. That's why this time we got to draw the line and say, no, no, this time, this time we go to war. And this time we expose you and hold you accountable. That is the solution to our problem. Winning, defeating the enemy, and not giving an inch. Let's remember, let's just go through some of these individuals I just mentioned. Brennan, we know, of course, he voted for Gus Hall, the communist, for president. We had Clapper, who lied about collecting communications on all Americans unwittingly. We have Comey, who leaked classified information, and then he manufactured the Mueller witch hunt. We have Susan Rice, who wrote that little note to herself about doing it by the book, that CYA letter. And we know that she unmasked hundreds and hundreds of people, innocent people, 
illegally based on information that was collected illegally. Comey, Brennan, Clapper engineered the Trump meeting to serve as the predicate for CNN to report on the narrative, that news hook that they needed. They collaborated together to, to create the news hook, which set this thing off in the media, all based on the phony dossier, which they knew was phony because they helped put it together. Peter's been stroking us, just as Lisa Page said. The words that he said were, they meant exactly what they said. We had all those FISA warrants based on the dossier. Uh, a FISA warrant, and uh, they attempted to get FISA warrants six times. Four of the six times they were successful. All of them based on lies. Most of them based on the dossier. We have Yates, who abused Michael Flynn. She ambushed him. She ambushed Michael Flynn. He didn't even know it was being interviewed. Didn't have a lawyer present. He thought they were just coming over to talk shop. And they used it to set him up. Yates abused Flynn. No question about it. They put spies and agent provocateurs in the campaign to run traps, to set up Trump team members. Thousands of 702 queries. 85% of them unlawful. We had good old uh, Chuck, Chucky the Cuck Schumer telling us that the CIA can get back at you six ways from Sunday. Remember that? So, can Trump trust the intel community? Can Trump trust the intel community? Hell no! Not as far as he could throw them. <laughs> Today we had a funny video. Trump shared a video of Crooked Hillary when she was Secretary of State, when she made the following quote. I'm sure you've seen the video by now. If you haven't, I'm sure you will. Just go to Facebook or Twitter. It's everywhere. The quote from Hillary in this video is, We need a strong Russia, a strong, confident, prosperous, stable Russia. It's in the interest of the world. <laughs> well, that's what she said. We need a strong Russia. Uh, we need a strong, confident, prosperous, stable Russia. It's in the interest of the world. She's on video saying exactly that. And do you remember that little reset? <laughs> when she got together with Lavrov and gave him the reset button and he looked at it. What's this? And she said, oh, it's a reset button. Look at it. And he's like, oh, yeah, you spelled reset wrong. <laughs> they can't even fucking spell reset. That's how incompetent they are. Hey, but we got some good news. 79%. Of Republicans approve of how Trump handled the Putin meeting. 79% approve of how uh, of Republicans approve of how Trump handled the meeting. That's what you call strong support. 45% of Americans think intel agencies have a political agenda. 45% of Americans think intel agencies have a political agenda. Who are the other 55%? They need to do some research, some reading, and some study. 55% of Americans are clueless. Of course, I guess you all heard that Judge Janine was kicked off the view uh, and thrown out of the building by, apparently, Whoopi Goldberg, who apparently on her way out the door said, uh, F you, F you, get the F out of my building. That's a nice way to treat your guest. That's who these people are. They're unhinged. The Sun Tzu effect on Whoopi Goldberg. Lisa Page has confirmed that Strzok's statement that, quote, there's no there there was about the Trump-Russia case. When Strzok said, yeah, I don't want to really be a part of that Mueller thing. Uh, just, there's no there there. That's right. Never was. But that didn't stop him from running up the coup, did it? So Lisa Page is saying, yeah, when they ask her about that, there's no there there. Were they talking about the Trump-Russia investigation? Yes. <laughs> oh, you'll like this story. <laughs> you know, there's a person, a staffer for the Missouri Senator, Claire McCaskill. My guess is this person's not a staffer for Claire McCaskill anymore. <laughs> not as of today or yesterday, because this staffer got caught. This is a staffer who works for Claire McCaskill, Senator from Missouri. This staffer was overheard saying in regards to voting for Judge Kavanaugh, quote, 
Claire McCaskill won't even consider voting for Kavanaugh. She doesn't even try to represent Missourians. She doesn't give a shit about us. We already knew this, but to hear it openly bragged about is outrageous. <laughs> that is a staffer for Claire McCaskill, or former staffer for Claire McCaskill. I'm sure that person has been fired now that this has gone public and it's all over Twitter and other social media. <laughs> Saying that Claire McCaskill, this is someone that works for her, says that she won't consider voting for Kavanaugh. She doesn't even try to represent Missourians. She doesn't give a shit about us. We already knew this, but to hear it openly bragged about is outrageous. Keep in mind, Trump won Missouri by 20%. 20%. And I do believe she's up for re-election. We gotta throw her ass out. What do you think? Of course, we've all heard that the uh, about the leak, uh, the deep state leak on Trump uh, yesterday about um, learning that Trump was advised that Putin was involved in the cyber attacks uh, during the election. And of course, he was notified about this Excuse me. He was notified notified about this just days before the inauguration. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why then? Well, it was a cover your ass. It was just before the inauguration. They kept it from him from the whole time through the campaign. They put informants in his campaign, tried to run frame-up operations, tried to run entrapment operations. They're still doing it. They were doing it back then. But they got a couple days out from the inauguration, and they started... And then they realize, uh-oh, we got to get this cover our ass thing together. And one thing we definitely have to do to cover our ass so that if we're ever asked about it later, we can say, yeah, uh, we did tell Trump. So that's why they told Trump uh, that they suspected, believed that uh, Putin or the Russians were uh, had involved himself in the 2016 election. That's why they told him that. They told him that a couple days before the inauguration. Not because they were trying to help him out. Otherwise, they'd have told him that three, four months earlier. No, no, no. They told him that because they realized it would eventually come up and they would have to cover their ass. And that's why they told him that a couple days before the inauguration. Far too late. But it didn't stop them. But they didn't tell him, obviously, everything else. They didn't tell him about the dossier being paid for by Hillary. They didn't tell him about the dossier being used to get surveillance warrants that were surveilling him. In fact, one of the surveillance warrants was still active until six months after he was president. He, he was under investigation, under surveillance at the time they told him this. So this is not like it looks bad on Trump or anything. It just still looks bad on them. It's an obvious, it was an obvious CYA. Covering their ass for their crimes. Well, we have another damning text if we need any more. Here's another damning text, like we needed another one. In this particular text, it's a gift that keeps on giving. <clears throat> Strzok texted Page hours after Comey was fired, saying, quote, We need to open the case we've been waiting on. Now, while Andy is acting, is acting, he didn't say acting, uh, FBI director, but that's what he meant, acting FBI director. So what is he saying? He's saying that apparently they've been wanting to open this case, but for whatever reason, uh, they weren't doing it under Comey. But once they got Andy in charge while he was while he was acting is what, is what Strzok is saying. Hey, we got to hurry up, Mac, because Trump is going to be appointing a new FBI director. And once he appoints a new FBI director, he may not be friendly to the cause. So if we are going to get this thing done, we need to get it done now while we got McCabe, who will go along with us on this or who is part of it. Because if we get a new FBI director who's not part of it, then this whole thing blows up. So this is what uh, Strzok was telling Page. Uh, right hours after Comey was fired, we need to open the case we've been waiting on now while Andy is acting. Now this was in May, on May the 9th of 2016. May the 9th of 2016, they're talking about what they needed to get going. Now Page responded to that by saying, quote, we need to lock in, and then there's a redacted name, we need to lock in, redacted name, in a formal chargeable way. We need to lock in somebody in a formal, chargeable way. Soon. And nobody's really sure who that would be. We used to think it was Flynn, but the timing doesn't work out. Flynn had already... That Flynn wasn't really in the in, in the scope right then. I'm thinking it might have been Carter Page, maybe Papa Galapagos, or maybe they were talking about Trump himself. But they needed to get somebody 
uh, page, and I don't know if this information, if they got this from her uh, in the last couple days, they've been interviewing her, but it'd be interesting to know if they got the name, the redacted name that she was referring to when she said we need to lock in so-and-so in a formal, chargeable way soon. By the way, this violates due process. This right here, this right here, this right here, this violates due process. Opening in an investigation based on who may be in charge of the investigation is a violation of due process. Another of the many crimes that continue to go overlooked, unnoticed, and seemingly unimportant. That's why this has to be exposed, friends. They ain't going to volunteer themselves. Sessions ain't going to lock anybody up. Rodenstein ain't going to lock anybody up. Ray isn't going to lock anybody up. Ain't going to happen. The petition to remove Mad Maxine Waters is gaining steam on uh, the uh, whitehouse.gov petition. They need 100,000 signatures. They're closing in. If you have not signed on to that petition on whitehouse.gov to remove Mad Maxine Waters from the Congress, you might want to do that. We have Obama still running his mouth, and now he's telling the Democratic Party that identity politics doesn't work. He's blasting the Democrats, <laughs> saying you can't bring people in who you are attacking. No shit. They're not that smart. Well, it looks like California, California's Supreme Court has now blocked the ballot to split California into three states. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. So when they first launched this thing, it, it wasn't very popular, but it's been gaining more and more and more steam. And now you're starting to see it trickle up into the 35, 45 uh, every week it gains more. They can see it's getting real popular. And they're terrified, just like what happened to them in Brexit when they got slammed on Brexit. California is looking at this and going, uh-oh, we're not going to let what happened to the Brits with Brexit happen to us here in California. We're going to go ahead and kill this deal. So they did. They got a Supreme Court, uh, California Supreme Court judge to knock it down so it will not be on the ballot in November. Cal Cal California will not uh, be split into three states. And back to a previous point and something I, I hope is going to happen, but something I'm telling you I think needs to happen, is that right after the midterms, which I believe that we're going to be very successful, and we better be right after the midterms, I believe that Trump needs to clean the House again. Sessions, Ray, Rodenstein, and Coates all need to go. They all need to go. It, it can be friendly goodbye or an unfriendly goodbye. It doesn't really matter to me. they got to go. He's got to clean the House. They're part of the swamp, in my opinion. Some of you may disagree. That's okay. They got to go, in my opinion. And, you know, one of the biggest mistakes and things I think a lot of people can look at with Trump and say, yeah, well, one thing I can honestly say Trump's not done very well at is the people he's picked to be in his cabinet, the people he's named to be uh, CIA director, FBI director, this type of thing. And I agree, 100%. He has not had the best cabinet picks. But let's all keep in mind how this works. These people have to be confirmed by the Senate. And you don't get confirmed unless you're a deep stater. And Trump didn't have that much political firepower. He came into office, you know, on a very thin sheet of ice. But hopefully after the midterms, uh, after he's had so much success and his numbers are so high with Republicans and he picks up a few more Republicans, particularly in the Senate, we should have 53, 54 seats. We'll be getting rid of Corker, uh, uh, Flake and McCain, they'll be replaced with better, uh, hopefully, Trump-supporting senators. Plus, he'll pick up two or three. He'll have far more support. He'll have far more power uh, and a, a better, a bigger bully pulpit to operate from after the midterms. And he should take advantage of that political capital. capital uh, if it's very successful in the midterms, he should take advantage of that political capital and use it all to clean the House. And this time use his, his uh, bully pulpit to get the right people in those positions instead of deep staters. That's exactly what he needs to do. It's exactly what he needs to do. And then he needs to drop the hammer, whether it's declassifying all this, I think a presidential commission. In fact, I've been saying this for weeks and weeks. I don't hear anybody else saying it. But I believe that a very popular phrase you're going to be hearing in the not-too-distant future is that the president needs to appoint a special presidential commission, citizen commission, largely made up of citizens. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys have a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye.